today is Wednesday, October 13th, and we're here on Zoom, and it is almost 10 a.m. My name is Brennan Hamilton with the UNI Museum, and today I'll be interviewing Pat Zelaznik. Thank you so much for interviewing with us. So please state your name, your role as either a student or teacher at your school, the name of your school, and then what years you were there. Okay, my name is Pat Zelaznik. My maiden name when I was going to school was Pat Burl, B-U-R-U-L-L. -L, and I was a student at Roosevelt Country School for eight years. I'm trying to think. I'm 70, so I was there from first grade through eighth grade. I guess I haven't figured out the years, but uh, we did not have kindergarten. We just started at first grade. So can you describe your childhood? Well, we lived on a ranch at the end of the road, 30 miles from uh, the main town of Chamberlain, where we did business. We were the last people on the road. So if we saw someone coming down the trail, we knew they were there for us or they were lost. We had a cattle ranch and I had an older brother, Joe who was four years older than I was. Yeah, we went to town basically once a week to get groceries and stuff. So we just did the farm life. Okay, so what was the town for you? We lived 15 miles from Reliance, which was just a very, very small town, Reliance, South Dakota. This is in South Dakota. I guess I didn't say that. But then Chamberlain, South Dakota, was actually 30 miles from us, and it was a town of about 2,000, and actually that's where my dad graduated from high school, and that's why when we got ready for high school, he wanted us to go there rather than Reliance, which had a smaller school. We were 11 miles from Blacktop or from a highway, so for years it was just gumbo, uh, 11 miles of gumbo to our house. So if it rained or snowed, we were, it was hard to get out. Um, eventually they graveled part of it. So. so how far away did you live from your rural school from Roosevelt? Eight miles. And so back in the day when you grow up in the country, that seemed like a long ways because my parents would make that trip, round trip twice a day. So that was 32 miles a day. They would drive to educate us. And that went on for 12 years because my brother was four years older than I was. So at one point we figured out how many times around the world my dad could have driven had he <laughs> added it all up over the 12 years. And we were four miles from our mailbox. So getting the mail every day was like a big deal too. <laughs> so. so did your parents drive you every single day to school or did you ever walk? No, they had to drive us just because it was so far. And there were several times when my brother was still at the country school with me that we rode our horses to school mm -hmm. and we would make it a big day. All the kids would ride their horses. We lived the farthest away. Most of the kids that went there just lived within three or, you know, maybe two or three miles. Mm -hmm. But we would ride up, we were on a river bottom. So getting up out of the river bottom was, you know, navigating the hills and all that. And so that was kind of fun. Do you have any distinct memories of your time going to school at all? I guess the thing that sticks in my mind was that, like I said, we lived the farthest away, but my dad made sure we were always there. We had a 54 Willys Jeep <laughs> and dad would do whatever it took and drive through whatever he had to drive through to get, a, get us there. And that was kind of the joke because we lived the farthest away, but people that lived closer, if it snowed bad, they wouldn't come, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> And those trips could have been harrowing. My dad was kind of fearless when it came to that, but I was rather fearful. So a, a Willie's Jeep has like two, just two seats in it. And it was a floor shift. And my dad made a little straight across seat that attached between the other two seats that kind of sat over the gear shift and all that. And that was my little seat to sit in because otherwise it was just a two person vehicle. And of course, no seat belts back then. So yeah, I was kind of a scared little girl some of the time. One of the things I have grown to admire now was that my dad, it was a county school. So my dad was on the county school board. And so he was part of always hiring the teacher, which was not easy to get a teacher to come 
to a country school because you know, if they lived in Reliance or the next closest smaller town was Kennebec, they either had to be willing to drive. But for two years, we had a teacher who parked her trailer house by the country school so that she could be right there. And so she wouldn't have to drive and stuff. And my dad was part of that. And I mean, I literally do not feel that old, but there were outdoor toilets. So to go to the bathroom in the wintertime, you really, you didn't fake it. You really had to go (laughs) if you were going to go out there. And we had just a stove, a heating stove in the middle of the room. Uh, We had a cistern, a water cistern that uh, we pumped our water out of. I remember that we had a flagpole and we would have a flag raising every morning and go out and say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. When school first started in the fall, one of the farmers would go up and mow down all the grass or, you know, everything that had grown up in the yard. And we would take that, at, like he'd windrow it. So there'd be long windrows of, which would just mean rows, piles of hay. And we would take those piles and make hay forts and all of that. So the fall was kind of fun because we had things we could do then. What were some of your interests as a child? Well, I was the indoors girl and my brother was the outdoors boy. So he rode horses with my cousins and I did ride some, but that wasn't a natural thing for me. They were all more interested than I was. I was the girly girl. I had doll houses. I had one of those metal split level doll houses. I thought I was right uptown with that. And Yeah, I just used to do inside things. As I got a little bit older, I would go for walks on our land. We had like a thousand acres and we were, like I said, it was hilly. So I would go for long walks just to kind of, you know, be by myself and stuff. And one of the things that I did was draw house plants. I had just pad after pad after pad of paper and I would draw house plans to scale. I suppose I got that from my dad because he was a builder. He would build houses before he took over my grandparents' ranch. So I used to spend hours doing that and I would put furniture in there, but I would I would have the thickness of the walls drawn to house plans and stuff. So I don't know why I didn't become an architect, but I didn't. (laughs) Um, I wanted to be a nurse all my life. My mom fixed up one of the little rooms with curtains in it, and I had my dolls in there and all the empty medical bottles and stuff. And so interesting that my youngest daughter grew up to be a nurse. (laughs) And I always love to do hair, you know that. Um, And I used to do all the neighbor's hair and my mom's hair. And my dad taught me how to cut his hair with a clipper and comb when I was quite a little girl. Yeah, I I actually wanted to be a hairdresser from the time I was in high school. And unfortunately, I was kind of shamed for wanting to do that because I was a good student and everyone said, why would you just want to be a hairdresser? You know, Mm -hmm. so I started college, but then I got engaged that Christmas to my first husband and knew I wouldn't graduate from college. So I went to business school. So I was in business school for, uh, or was a secretary office assistant for 15 years before I went to beauty school. Yeah. And uh, one interesting thing, my dad, like I said, he built houses. So after he married my mom, they moved back to South Dakota and he built a house in Chamberlain and gave that to my grandparents as a down payment for the ranch. So they moved into town, into the house dad built, and then dad and mom and my brother moved out to the ranch, and I was born after that then. So the the ranch had been in the family for a long time, Mm -hmm. and now actually my cousin's son owns the ranch, so it's still a Burl, B-U-R-U-L-L, it's still in the Burl name, so that's fun. So when you were a child, did you like school at all? Why and why not? Yes, I did like school. I love to learn. And there were probably at any given time, there were eight to 12 students at school, depending, you know, just on people aging out. And I thought it was a really good education. It 
kind of reminds me of today's homeschooling situations because by the time you get to eighth grade, you've heard the eighth grade for eight years, you know, because you're all in one room and the teacher is multitasking and doing all those things, you know, and as you got older, then you help the younger kids with their spelling or with their reading or something like that. So yeah, I did enjoy it. I always liked learning. Did you have a favorite subject? I just kind of liked them all at that point in grade school. I liked math and I liked English and yeah, history. I kind of liked it all. I Science, I guess, was my least favorite always. I just didn't quite get it. <laughs> and then I have a daughter who's a pharmacist and she's all about, you know, chemistry and all that. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you got that for me. <laughs> One of the fun things since we were a county school, I mean, you know, they there were many country schools within Lyman County, South Dakota. And we would miss out on a lot of the things that the city kids got to do. So we would have like a county track meet day where we would go, all the schools would gather and you'd go and you'd run and do all your things. And then we would have, we had county chorus. So we would go to the county seat in Kennebec, South Dakota and practice all the all the kids would come together and we'd have this co this concert then for everybody to come to and we always enjoyed those days too I enjoyed the fact that we every year we would put on a Christmas play at our little country school and you know it was basically it was literally one room there weren't any side rooms or anything so it was a big ordeal we would hang up sheets for our curtain you know and somebody would have to pull the sheets back and forth and little sheets in the back for dressing rooms and stuff and every year we'd put on this play for the community to come together and see and that was always fun we would have this little fundraiser once a year it was like a box social and all the students would create at your home, you'd create this lunch, you know, sandwich, pie, whatever you wanted to put in your luncheon, and, and you'd decorate the box. And then the community would come together and people would bid on your box. And then you had to sit with them and eat, which was awkward. Like for me, a young country girl, it was just, you know, so naive. So if, uh, you know, if one of the farmers bought your box, you had to sit with them and have a nice conversation and eat the lunch, you know, but those are some of the things that stood out. What did a typical morning look like? We were big on breakfast people, you know, mom always had breakfast and we actually lived in a house that also just had a central heat system. So on winter mornings, you know, you'd come downstairs and be very cold and you'd stand over the furnace and the in-floor furnace. Mom always made a good breakfast and packed our lunches. And yeah, I, w I was pretty much always ready to go to school. I don't remember, like I said, the morning rituals at school, we would start with the flag raising and the Pledge of Allegiance. And then um, I think the teacher probably tried to keep everybody's sort of doing the same thing, you know, like she would have math class for all the ages or math, you know, reading for all the ages and, and things like that. I, re I remember puzzle pages. <laughs> I don't know. I think because I got hives doing puzzle pages and I don't know if I was nervous about it or if I was allergic to the glue or what it was, but I just remember I couldn't do puzzle pages anymore because I got hives. <laughs> so anyway, that was just a funny little memory. I think we would be like nine to four maybe is what we would go. So, and I probably had over the time, I probably had in the eight years, five different teachers like I didn't have just one teacher through the whole thing. So some of them were very good. Some I were, it was just like, okay, that was a good year. <laughs> did your school have a uniform or what did you typically wear to school? Oh, just jeans. Just, yeah, we didn't have to dress any particular way. So just be clean. <laughs> it was interesting as I was thinking back about and thinking about this conversation, you know, you think country school and you think 70 years ago, 
But even with that few of people, there was still the same things there are today. There was still hierarchy. There was still people that thought they were better than you. There were still bullies, you know, um, just on a smaller scale. So that could be difficult. The one thing I remember the trauma was when President Kennedy was shot and it was kind of the middle of the day and one of the former graduates of the same country school, he was quite a bit older than I was, came over to the school and let us know that it had happened. And um, that was a Friday. And so we were to go to Chamberlain that day, like we always did on a Friday. And I think that was the first time I'd seen my dad cry when they picked us up and took us to school. They were so devastated, you know, to be living that part of history. So that was a big memory. Do you have any other memories of any big historical events happening during your lifetime or during your time in school? Yeah, during the, I remember um, for the first space shot, you know, I remember my dad gathering us around our little black and white TV and he said, watch this. He said, this is a big deal and this will be part of history. And then that idea came back to me when the towers went down and I was taking my youngest to Mike and Tori. We were just getting ready to go to school that day. And I did the same thing. I said, you guys pay attention. This is a big deal. This is going to be history. You know, so that sense came back to me. We also had county graduation for eighth grade graduation, and I was honored to be salutatorian for the county. So that was a big deal. We had our, our big county graduation at Kennebec again at the county seat, and I gave a little talk. <laughs> so that was fun. And then since we lived 30 miles from town, that may not seem like a big distance now, but back then that was a big deal. You didn't drive back and forth every day to go to high school. And so my brother led the way because he was four years older, but we had to move into town as kids and stay all week and then go just go home on the weekend. And that was kind of a game changer for me. And I think for my mom too, you know, at 14 to send your daughter into town to live all week and and back then, phone was long distance, so we went to get to talk at home, cost money. I stayed with my grandma the first year, which was nice, and then for, for three years, I just rented a room from a lady and stayed in town all week and went home on the weekends, and so... I was very lonely and I was shy, so it was hard to get acquainted moving into a big school. I mean, it seemed like a big school when you had eight kids in your whole school. It was a Chamberlain High School, had about 400 kids. And so it was hard for me to make friends because I was shy, but to the people that had known each other all through school, it seemed like I was a snob, you know, or something, but it's just because I was so shy. So high school were, was not my best life. <laughs> it was okay. I had fun. I did things and stuff, but I always felt awkward in high school. So when you lived in town, did you live with a roommate or were you just by yourself then? Just by myself. Yeah. I rented a room from an older lady who just, that's what she did to get money. And uh, yeah, it was weird as I think about it now. I mean, I was perfectly safe. Nothing ever happened. But she'd have workers also renting rooms, and we were like, I could lock my door, but we had to share bathrooms and stuff. And I'm like, that seems weird to me now, but you know, it was just another awkward part of my teen years. So, and then in high school, I my first job was working at a restaurant and um, waitressing at the little hometown restaurant there. And yeah, high school. Hmm. Wouldn't do it over. So going back to your rural school, do you remember kind of the layout of like the classroom and the way the schoolhouse looked? It was just a very square building and it had a, a lot of windows on the south side, just a lot of big windows. And the schoolyard was fenced, you know, and stuff. But we would walk in on the east side and then the blackboard was up front on the west side. So our seats all faced 
towards the west and we had the the all-in-one chairs you know where you you got your desk and your chair and everything was all together yeah blackboard erasers chalk uh we had big maps that you would pull down from the top when they were doing geography or history or something we had the uh written ABCs across the top in green, you know, um, that were tacked up along the wall. Yeah, we had to take writing, you know, we had to learn to write in cursive and start out printing and then writing and that kind of thing. I don't remember school as being real hard. So that was a blessing. And I did well in high school. I felt like uh, my grade school gave me a good education so I didn't struggle in in high school either so you mentioned in your high school there was about like 400 kids so was that in your graduating class or total total we graduated with 97 and at your rural school how many kids were there when you graduated I had three kids that were in the same grade as I was all the way through. Mary Ann and Tom and I <laughs> were the were the eighth graders there. So, so what were lessons like at your rural school? Just a lot of written stuff. I, that's kind of what I remember. They did a lot of workbook kind of things. So you had your own workbooks to do math and writing. And we had history books that we would read, but then we did a lot of writing for it. We would have to memorize poetry and then get up and, you know, recite these poems in front of the class and give reports, you know. I mean, it wasn't too terrible because you were with these kids all the time. You didn't feel too weird about that. It was quite a small, (laughs) small group. So did you typically have, you mentioned writing assignments. Did you ever have a lot of exams at all or tests? Oh yeah. Yeah. We had, what comes to mind is like weekly tests, but I can't tell you for sure if that was really the thing. You would basically have units and chapters and things that you would go through. And at the end of that time, you'd take a test on it. I remember taking the Iowa basic skills tests back then, and those would freak me out. I could pretty much study for anything and do really well, but I completely bombed things like those kind of tests. They just, they didn't represent really what I could learn. So I don't know. It wasn't like taking the SATs or anything. It was just Iowa basic skills and you started it when you were young and did it all the way through. And so was it called Iowa basic skills or was there like a South Dakota version of that? No, it was all Iowa basic skills. They were the originators of the test. And so that's what everyone would do, or at least our state did. Yeah. And I would get so nervous and yeah, it was... And I always got really nervous taking tests all the way through my life. And I think because I did well and my parents were complimentary when I did well, I translated that into thinking that I had to do well or else. And they they never gave me that opinion, but I got it in my brain that if I didn't get A's, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. And so taking tests was always really hard for me. I mean, emotionally hard to do that. So when you were in school, you mentioned earlier that there was a county choir. Um, Did you have music education in your school or was that kind of like an extracurricular? We sang, but I never, it, it wasn't anything that got honed for me. And I really liked singing. So when I got to the high school, I joined chorus and it was my misunderstanding thinking that by joining chorus, they would help me learn how to sing. But what happened was you already had to know how to sing and they stood me up in front of everybody that I didn't know and gave me some sheet music to read and told me to sing it. And of course, it was terrible And I was going to get a D in music. And so I dropped it and I never got to pursue music then. And I never played an instrument or anything. So that was, that was sad for me. And I was not an athlete. Oh my gosh. And they didn't have much athletics at that time for girls. 
So I didn't have much of a niche. I wanted to be a cheerleader. And back then it was the cute, skinny little girls that got to be cheerleaders. And I tried out for cheerleading and was not a skinny little girl and did not make it. And so that was just another confirmation for me that I wasn't good enough. You know, I wasn't good enough for music. I wasn't good enough for cheerleading. I wasn't good enough for sports, you know, so there it was. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, well, those are just the things, you know, those are just part of the things that made high school not fun for me, so. Did your school make you take like a PE class or physical education? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the high school did. Grade school did not. I mean, our PE was we had outside lunch or outside recess and outside lunch every day and we had swings and we just played and ran and played tag. We'd play anti over which was uh, uh, getting the basketball over a shed that we had. And then you had, you know, you had to catch it on the other side and we'd try to get it over the, the actual schoolhouse, but that it was pretty tall. So not yeah. many of us could do that. So we just played hard. Um, that was our PE. <laughs> yeah. When you were in high school, was PE separated like boys and girls? I think we did have it together because I remember us having to, learn how to square dance you know and you're like oh I have to dance with him <laughs> yeah so in fact it's interesting one time when I was back in Chamberlain visiting probably three or four years ago I ran into my high school gym teacher I mean she looked the same and it was just interesting to me she because she wasn't that old she was just out of college when she taught RPE classes and so, yeah, seeing her again was, was fun. And we just visited a little bit, so. How often did you have PE? I think like three times a week, maybe in high school. Did you ever have to do like a presidential fitness? When you say that, I, it does sound familiar, but I can't really tell you anything about it. And like I said, I wasn't very physically adept. So if we did have to, I probably didn't do very well. <laughs> How many sit-ups can you do? Not very many. <laughs> so did your school offer any like foreign language classes? Yes. Uh, I took Spanish for three years. My brother actually took French when he was there, which I was surprised. You think he graduated from high school in 65. And so thinking back then that they offered French. And I did Spanish and I loved my Spanish teacher. She became a lifelong family friend and she was just an amazing person. And then I took, I went to a semester at the University of South Dakota and took Spanish there also for the semester. And that's when I quit then and went to business school. Mm -hmm. Oh, I also took Latin. They offered Latin then. And yeah, Latin was very interesting because I really got to see the correlation of how our other languages have come from Latin. That was a really good basic class. I know that you mentioned you did a lot of drawing as a kid. So did your school offer any art classes? It did, but other forms of art weren't kind of my thing. I think I liked the preciseness of drawing mm -hmm. houses because, you know, it was very, you just knew what you needed to do and it was a specific thing, how you wanted to do it. And then just freehand drawing kind of wasn't my thing. So, but I did cut all my girlfriend's hair all through high school. <laughs> how did you do that? Did you have them come to your apartment or... Yeah, where I'd go to their house. I just loved it. I mean, I was cutting my own hair from the time I was 12, you know, and it was just a passion and I can't believe they trusted me. <laughs> I mean, I'd had no training, you know. I also took home ec class in high school and I, my mom had taught me how to sew. She sewed a lot of my clothes when I was young and Every year at Christmas, I would pick out a doll that I wanted for Christmas, and then she would make an entire wardrobe for the, that doll. And so I had actually sewn a dress for her before, when I was like 13, before I ever went to high school. So home ec, um, sewing part of home ec was really fun and easy for me. And the cooking, I don't remember that that much. I never really loved to cook. I like to bake, but I don't really love to cook. Just ask my family. So, but home ec was fun and kind of required. 
Would you say you still use the skills that you learned there today? Somewhat, yeah. I mean, I've sewn all my life. I My first wedding dress, I sewed, made my first wedding dress and all the bridesmaids' dresses on a converted treadle singer sewing machine. It was just, all it did was go back and forth and make buttonholes. It didn't do zigzag, it didn't do anything like that. And so that was quite a feat <laughs> to do that. And I sewed for other people at some point. Uh, when I was first married, I, you know, made some extra money by sewing for other people. Did your school offer uh, driver's ed or was that something that was done through like a private company? Uh, we did not take driver's ed back then. Your parents taught you how to drive and then you went to the driver's place and you took a written test and you, and you drove with a drive education person and that was it. My big learning in how to drive was driving that four uh, four-wheel drive Willie's Jeep four miles up to get the mail and back all by myself. I thought I was pretty cool to do that <laughs> when I was 12 and 13 years old. And did your school offer any sort of typing class at all? Oh, yes. Yeah, I took typing. Yeah, didn't do too bad at that. On an actual, you know, just old typewriter. So no computers back then. Going back to rural school, what were, you mentioned that you had multiple teachers. What were they like? I had a female teacher, one uh, like a neighbor for, for first grade. And then I had the, the lady that lived in a trailer house. She also had a daughter, grown daughter that came and lived there with her too. And I think she was there two years. She was an to me, she seemed like an older lady, but you know, she was probably in her fifties. I had another neighbor, actually the father of my first grade teacher taught us one year. Um, he was a very intelligent man, but very unique. He was hard of hearing. And so I just remember him being up in class, you know, like this, trying to talk to us. Very intelligent, learned a lot from him. One of my favorite teachers was probably my seventh grade teacher. He was, he was a twin and his brother was a nurse and he was a teacher and just just a great guy. He was probably in his 30s at that time, uh, became a family friend. And he ended up going to Boys Town. Um, he went into the priesthood and went to Boys Town and uh, worked there in Omaha at the boys home. And he actually set it up for me to come visit Boys Town and go to the prom with one of his boys that was there. <laughs> so I got to go to Boys Town prom when I was a junior. But then he later, he had dated a woman and then went into the priesthood and then left the priesthood again and married her. And then they both worked at Boys Town. So, but we just stayed in touch for quite a few years. He was very good. So yeah, I had variety. I had men, women, older, younger throughout that time. So what did your teachers typically wear to school? My little brain back then, I, I can't even tell you. I think pretty casual. We were all just casual. The women that lived in the trailer house, I think she wore dresses all the time. You know, it was just kind of whatever was their garb. But I don't remember it being a big deal, you know, one way or the other. So what were some of the rules of the classroom? And then were there any distinct like punishments or disciplinary action that would happen if you broke the rules? <laughs> that just brought up another memory. One year we had a woman whose son was in the school and he was kind of a, a little imp of a sort. I mean, he was a year older than I was, you know, but he was always kind of the cut up in class. <laughs> I remember her taking a fly swatter after him because <laughs> he just wouldn't, you know, he just was naughty, you know. I don't remember bankings, you know, or anything like that from the teachers. We were supposed to, you know, be respectful and not be talking out loud a lot, but a lot of times you were working with somebody else in the room, you know, like we would take the smaller kids back to the back of the room and read with them and other people were studying together. So it wasn't real, real strict. I guess the biggest deal was, you know, trying to raise your hand to go out to that one, that, <laughs> that outdoor bathroom, you know, it's like, 
you really have to go or are you just trying to get outside and you know those kind of things but mm -hmm. um, I don't remember lots of disciplinary issues. And then did your school have a school nurse or ever have like yearly visits by a doctor at all? No I don't remember that. We would have to get our shots to go to school and stuff. Mm -hmm. But our family doctor lived in Kennebec, which was the county seat, but we were 30 miles from there, just like we were 30 miles from Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. And so I used to get really bad tummy aches when I was a little girl. And mm -hmm. I would wake up in the night just screaming. And, you know, my poor parents would get up in the night, they'd load me up, we'd call the doctor, we'd head up there to see the doctor and then about halfway there many times it would subside mm -hmm. which was just a mystery for years and hard I'm sure on my parents you know just like is she faking and do, do we take her or do we not you know I mean it was just a big deal and then when I was a senior in high school I had my appendix out and they found out my appendix had been leaking for years so every time I would have one of those leaking incidences is when I would get those terrible tummy aches. I didn't even want to go stay at a friend's house overnight because I was afraid I would get one of those stomach aches. So, And then also in your school, did you ever have a nap time at all, like especially when you were younger? Boy, I don't, I don't remember that. And how did the school day end? I don't know. We would just end, you know, everybody, she'd say, well, it's time to, time to go, put your books away, you know, erase the blackboard. And parents would have already started pulling in you know, to pick you up and stuff and nothing huge and memorable, I guess. And when you were at home, did you have any chores or homework that you needed to do? Yeah, we would do homework. I was kind of babied. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of chores. My brother helped my dad a lot outside. You know, my mom was a stay at home and mom and she was one of those people that just felt like that was her job, you know? So, I mean, I would wash dishes and I guess my little rebellious streak was if I was asked to do something, I would kind of get incensed about it, but I loved surprising her. Like she would take a nap every afternoon. And if she hadn't asked me to do something, then if I went and cleaned up the kitchen or did something, I enjoyed doing that to surprise her. One of the frustrating things was when I would want to bake something and we would be out of an ingredient. And, you know, you don't just run to town and get the ingredients. So that kind of stopped the process. And I was kind of a pouty little girl. <laughs> and so I know you mentioned that you took the Iowa basic skills test. Did you also have to take the eighth grade exam? That I don't remember anything about that. Well, each year we took some kind of finals, you know, from each class, I think, you know, you just ended up your year by finishing all the stuff and taking, taking your last test. And also at your school, did you ever have uh, any like fire drills or tornado drills or duck and cover drills, any of those sort of experiences? Not that I remember. And then were there ever any incidents regarding safety at your school? No, we just lived in an amazingly wonderful little rural community. That was never an issue. What was the typical year-round school schedule like? I just kind of remember September to May. I can't specifically say. I'm sure there was still, is it 180 days or something, the thing now, and I'm sure that that was it then too. The thing that would keep us out of school the most is if we had a snow day, you know, I mean, we'd get blizzards. And like I said, my dad would have us there, but no, nobody, including the teacher, would show up. So then we'd get to go back home. And I don't remember how long we would have off at Christmas. I don't feel like we had huge times off because and then our school year in all could be shorter we only took three family trips that I ever remembered and it would have to be it would always have to be in August after dad was done hanging we took a car trip to Arizona and a car trip to Washington and a car trip to California and that was all to relatives that we knew what did you typically do during the rest of summer break? I would just do my hobbies. You know, we didn't have a lot of stuff. I would mow for us. We had our, you know, just our little yard. I would do the mowing and mom had a garden always and she always had flowers. And so she would process a lot of the vegetables and stuff. And Did your school ever offer any sort of 
class parties or class events to celebrate holidays at all? Well, just like I said, at Christmas time, you know, we would have those little plays and stuff. But yeah, not a ton of stuff. And then you talked about this a little bit earlier. But when you graduated, what did you do afterwards? I went to a semester at the university and then my first husband was in, went to the Navy. And so then we got engaged at Christmas time that year. And then he left for the Philippines for 16 months. And I went to business school and then I just went back and worked at the restaurant because rather than getting an office job, because I knew we were planning to get married after he got back from the Philippines. So I worked at the restaurant, stayed in town again with some people. And then we got married in 71 and we moved to Hawaii. His next station was Hawaii. And we were there for two years. And I had, that was kind of my first big office job there. I worked for a company called Chemitron Corporation. It was industrial gases and medical gases and stuff that we work that we did and worked with a lot of Japanese and Hawaiian and Samoan, you know, and I was oh, just, yeah. we got introduced to a whole different culture. And then um, uh, we moved back to Chamberlain for five years. And then in that period of time, then I lost my mom and then we moved again. And then we had a daughter in 76, my oldest daughter. And then uh, we got divorced at that time, and I remarried in 82, and and I worked in various offices all through this time. I worked in various offices and enjoyed it. And then I was in a job that I just did not like at all, and my brother finally said to me, why don't you just go to beauty school? That's what you've always wanted to do, and bless my dad's heart, he offered to pay for that since I hadn't completed college before, you know, and he hadn't felt like he had contributed to that. So I went to beauty school uh, when I was 36 and um, loved every minute of it and worked for three and a half years, had another baby, got to stay home. And then I got to open my own salon uh, when I was 53 and was there for 17 years. And I enjoyed the bookkeeping part of my salon, too, because I liked I had been doing bookkeeping, all kinds of stuff, you know, in my office when I was having office jobs and stuff. So I enjoyed both ends of the creativity and the and the uh, bookkeeping part of my job. I retired um, a year ago, July 1st. What are some important takeaways you want people to remember from your country school experience? I would say, like I said before, I felt like we got a really good education because you know, you just are in that intense environment for eight years and you just, you just can't fall through the cracks, you know, so anything you had trouble with, you really got to concentrate on. And I felt safe all those years. As I look back, I just admire my dad's role in education because of him being on the county school board and like he and I would go in the fall before the school opened up, he, he'd go, I would go with him and help get the schoolhouse ready. So we'd wash windows and we'd clean the school and clean the cistern and do all that kind of stuff. It was a very cozy lifestyle, but it certainly did not prepare me for the rest of the world, <laughs> is what I would say. You know, it's just you know, getting in to interact with all the people that you do once you head to a big high school and and beyond. It was a happy time in my life. I remember it being a good time. And what were some specific lessons you'd say you learned from this time in your life? Well, on a small basis, since we lived, you know, eight miles from most of people that we would play with even, you know. So growing up, until five years old, I would play with my cousins who lived eight miles away, but just learning how to interact with other people. I, at one point, got involved in an unkind thing that I had said about somebody, and, you know, my dad had to talk to me about that, and realizing that you don't do that to people, you know. I think just the basic interaction skills 
uh, were something that was really important for kids that are isolated like that, learning how to get along with the kids that you go to school with. And like I said, that wasn't always perfect either. There was a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. I'm better than you. My family's better than you and, you know, that kind of thing. So I remember it as a good time, though. I have fond memories of that. Would you say you had a best or worst day of school? Not really. I was I was pretty sick when I was at a, in um, second grade. I had my tonsils out and I had to be rushed back to the hospital two different times because I was hemorrhaging. And I had tonsillitis a lot before that. And so, you know, up until seven years old, when I had my tonsils out, I was kind of sickly. And, but, you know, they were so good that they would just send schoolwork home and I never really felt like I got behind or anything, but those sickly years were hard. And in your opinion, what are some of the biggest changes to education over the years? I just think of how much the media now and social, you know, Facebook and all of those things, there's so many opinions out there. And I think in when I was going, especially to country school, basically you had your parents' opinion and then you had the textbooks. And those were kind of the two things you drew from. Where now there's just so much information and misinformation, it's hard to know where you land in who you believe you know, what you believe. And there was a much stricter moral code as I was growing up. I remember in high school, when my brother was in high school, one of his classmates got pregnant and my mom wouldn't even really say that. She'd say, well, she was doing something she shouldn't, you know, there's a lot of shame and, or I grew up at least with that, you know, my grandma would never use the word pregnant. She'd say she was (laughs) <laughs> she just <laughs> nod her head. Yeah, she she's <laughs> you know. So in my environment, I don't know that all people were like that. It was it was pretty stringent. There was right and wrong, mm-hmm. and you didn't do it. And my dad was a very opinionated, and so I was surprised to grow up and find that people actually bought Ford cars and actually rooted for the Yankees because all I ever heard my dad was, you know, complain about all those things. So I was pretty sheltered in what I knew, how education went. It was the textbook and and my parents' opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. We had CBS News, you know, on a black and white TV, three channels is what we watched. And so the the information availability just wasn't the same as it is now. And so Mm -hmm. with schools having to jockey all the different opinions of every single area of life, I think would be quite difficult, actually. And so was there anything else that you wanted to talk about that I just didn't maybe touch on or mention? No, I think we, I think we covered the things that I kind of had in my head that I wanted to share. I feel like I had a good start. I feel like high school had a few bumps in the road and adjusting to life out on my own. You know, I still felt that I was pretty naive for a lot of years, you know, Mm -hmm. but um, God's been faithful to me and pulled me through so many things and I don't regret my beginnings. Well, thank you so much for your interview today. I'm going to